Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great day. So, I just wanted to talk today about the Soul Blight Grave Lords, uh, just my opinion on them, what I think what I think was got right with them, and uh, what do I think about the tome overall. Uh, I just wanted to start off by saying, yeah, no, I definitely, I think some, some changes have been made, and uh, I think some definitely some needed ones, but let's go into more detail. So, overall, what do I think about the tome uh, and all of its changes? Well, uh, overall, uh, I do I do think there's definitely been some good changes overall. Uh, one thing they, uh, for one thing I've, I've noticed is they've kept uh, the factionalized sub-allegiances. Like, uh, like, for example, there's kind of a, there's kind of a, a growing split between battle tomes that, ha that uh, where the sub-allegiances are basically just one ability and maybe a, uh, an unlocked battle line, and there's also sub-allegiances which are basically just entire new armies like before like before in the in like let's say second edition it was basically just all it gave you was uh at least most of the time was just one one command trait one artifact maybe one spell but now i'm noticing uh more and more that when they're going in this direction it's basically just di it's basically a different army in the same book like now they have their own entire unique command traits entire you entire unique spells entire unique artifacts like it, it, it kind of. I noticed it really kind of started last edition with like uh, the Heathen Knights of Slanesh and to a lesser extent uh, the the Sons of Bayamat. But now it's really it's really going. Now it's really being catching on with other tomes too. Like it's kind of interesting how how this split is working. Like some tomes are just like completely cutting down on sub allegiances, while the other ones are almost doubling down on it. I'm just it's just it's an interesting it's an interesting what mechanic they're going with. Um, overall, I think the core rules of the book have definitely been improved. Uh, they've they've got they've been cleaned up a lot. They've been made much more streamlined. They're overall, I would say, they're more powerful. Uh, there's nothing I I can't really think of any in in particular ones that I think haven't that were really done poorly. But I'll get to those in a minute. And also, I think there's also been amazing uh, uh, and, 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 uh, and interesting updates to War Scrolls. Like, basically, in my opinion, almost every War Scroll was updated in some capacity uh, for both better and worse in that regard. And I would say overall, the book is definitely more durable. Like, if we were com like, it, like for example, if people thought that the last Battle Tome was a step down in terms of durability from uh, the legions of Nagash. Well, I think this, this is probably like getting back up to that level. So uh, let, let's go into more on that. So what do I like about this? Well, uh, overall, I would say there's a lot of good stuff in this new book. One thing I do like is the 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 allegiance uh, the the sub the allegiance abilities I find are much more flavorable and they're much more powerful than the last book. Like while they're still broadly the same, I think there's um they're like they're, they've just been basically improved in every way. For example, like summoning back units has gotten a lot better uh you know before it was just like the the way the way you brought back units in the last book honestly just was not really that all that great like okay you had to like rack up enough like uh, like enough like uh, enough units to die to get the to be able to roll a five up to bring one back like it just they just almost never worked you know and uh i found also some of the ability some of the sub allegiances especially in regards to like you know like uh, heroes was just a little wonky i just think it's been a lot is cleaned up a bit so overall that is a definite plus there also i feel the book has much better internal internal balance like for example in, in the last book uh you know there was supposed to be like a you know like especially a split between zombies and uh, skeleton warriors but i really felt that uh like there there there, there became there there was definitely a lot more push for some units over and others like for example zombies really towards the end i felt became just the obvious take over skeleton warriors uh i kind of felt like uh you know blood knights were just a little bit too good uh, so what they like for example the blood knights are a perfect example like while the blood knights in the new book i think are better i think a lot of people have pointed out that uh, they definitely got uh, in, in a lot of ways toned down especially in ways though they interact with the book overall which i think was a good thing because because it, it, it once again you have this entire book full of units and if you just make some units like the blood knights and the zombies just obviously better than others you're just never going to see those units again like so i think that was a good thing and for example like yeah now now for example in the new book there is legitimate reasons to bring black knights again like could you imagine bringing black knights before like i you'd, you'd be laughed off the table in that regard and uh you know 
and, and especially in regards to like how the split between like uh, like white kings and and vampires in general worked out. I'm just gonna get back to that in a second. Um, especially also in this regard too, I feel like the uh, the overhauling of the sub allegiances have really worked out. Now, uh, le like uh, the soul blight grave lords always had like divided up uh, like you know between the different di different legions and dynasties, but I feel each one I feel uh, were were overhauled in good ways. Like for example, they, they some abilities that I feel that were just a little bit too good like for example the uh the avangorii uh, i'm probably butchering these names please forgive me you know the whole like monsters are one, minus one to wound i always felt that was just a little bit too good especially ways you could just buff all them up further now it's just like now it's just a single like uh, command trait i think that's better um i feel like you know like legion of night uh you know some of their outflanking has been toned down i think that's a good thing so all the sub allegiances i still feel are very good but just they've been they've been more streamlined uh, it's less, it's harder to power game with them, which is always a good thing, but there's still a lot of tactical flexibility. So that I really like overall. And also the book is overall much more durable. Like for, I, I you know, I love the, I, and also not just durable, but they found unique ways to make them durable. Like for example, with the white Kings are summonable. So you can actually bring back units while the vampires are durable in that they heal really fast while they're alive. And also you can now bring back units that were killed a lot more easier, which I feel is a good, it was a good thing because the, the old mechanic, you, you almost never got them out. Like it was just, by the time you, by the time you had to, you had like, I, I were, you know how you had to like enough units had to die in order to add enough to get the roll of five up to bring back a, a unit at half strength like by that point you're probably losing the game uh, more often than not if you if you kill if you lost that many units like now i know a lot of people probably don't like the whole idea of the four plus re uh, just bring back a unit at half strength but uh, honestly i don't think it's i don't think it's actually all that game breaking and trust me if anyone who's played like glooms by gits knows this is far from the worst of the bunch and overall i think the the various magic uh, are uh spells are much better there's a lot more emphasis on debuffing the enemy like you know like with minus ones to wound and 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 hurting their movement and and uh you know adding more rend to your attacks to attack them and taking away attacks like that's a trend i'm noticing a lot in recent tones it, it, it's worth there's a lot more more emphasis on debuffing your enemy than making your stuff overall better um i think i per i personally like that as an idea but i don't know if it really just if if you know well like if you're just debuffing your enemy instead of just making yourself better is isn't it kind of just coming out the same in the wash like i can get that argument i just personally like it from a from a fluff perspective because they always kind of look like look thought of the idea of death as you know sapping strength from the living so i just like it from a fluff perspective not uh, whether or not that's better or worse well that that's that's one for the philosophers i would say <laughs> so what could have been better well as always nothing can be perfect uh one thing that i really didn't much care for in the new book is i found a lot of heroes uh could be basically useless outside of their sub allegiance so what I mean is that uh, one big thing I noticed is that a lot of like, for example, special characters, uh, these are what I'm specifically talking about is a lot of them are, they, they really don't have a ton of utility outside of their own specific faction. Like, for example, like, you know, like Luke of I, or, uh, for example, Gorsloff, the Gravekeeper. Like a lot of their abilities are tied to buffing their specific sub allegiance. Like, you know, like, you know, uh, Gorsloff can only, buff, can only, you know, summon back, uh, Virkos, uh, Deadwalker zombies, and Luke of I, she only affects Avangorii monsters. Sorry, I'm probably butchering these names, uh, forgive me in post, uh, but, uh, like, like I said, like, I, I get where they're going with that is, but, like, I, I don't really, I, I, I don't specifically, like, I don't entirely agree with that, like, I get it from a fluff perspective, it makes sense, like, for example, like, when would probably Gorslov ever, like, fight alongside Manfred, but I don't know, like, you know, I feel like, I don't like the idea of anything in particular being like super tied into a specific faction like another thing is too like you know the those uh the ogre those ogre bodyguards you know sure you can run them in other factions but they really prefer to be run with like uh with radicar i i don't know i just feel like nothing like even though you have sub allegiance they shouldn't be i don't feel like you should be like fought if you if you have the models you should be able to use them more effectively in others but whatever i get it 
Uh, another thing is I'm, I'm noticing a lot, like the, due to the nature of how uh, the spells are now given out by the different allegiance abilities, a lot of units are going to get locked out of them. By that, what that I mean is that spells are a lot of spells which where they used to be able to be taken by any sub allegiance, they're now being locked out. Like so, for example, the spells available in, for example, Legion of Blood, they're only available there. So if I wanted to get like for example the spell to like uh, like to uh, you know minus one attack from the enemy or affecting uh, affecting uh, units movement, well I have to take the specific sub allegiance that it's in because it's not available anywhere else. So this can this can really um, like this can, I, this can definitely have issues with list building because not only now do you have when you're checking your sub allegiance, you also have to take into account like what abilities and spells you're not going to have access to when you're building your list unless if you're if you don't want to take a, a specific sub allegiance. Like again, I feel like we're just we're si we're siloing abilities in the book like that. Uh, that for example, if you never take that sub allegiance because you don't like its overall, you're never going to get to use that. That spell or you're never going to get to use that artifact like i just feel that um that's why it's just what again this is why i feel like even with sub allegiance abilities there should be universal spells in the book and universal artifacts in the books that can be taken by any sub allegiance so you're not so you're not so locked in to uh having to take certain sub allegiances now i know you, you like no one spell is completely so all encompassing that you that you 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 have to take it to win i'm not that's not what i'm talking about i'm just saying you're putting more you're putting more uh restrictions on what people can take and how they can build their army just just for the sake of like fluff and stuff which i i, I which i'm not against mind you i just feel that there needs to be a better i feel like a better balance could have been reached now this uh, now i'm not and i'm not even necessarily saying that this is bad like uh, some would probably even say this could be a good thing because you know again it keeps it keeps people from like because this way they can more they can more carefully uh you know balance these inter these spells and abilities amongst the rest of the allegiance abilities rather than you know cherry picking which can lead to you know instances of power gaming which in fur leads to nerfing which nobody wants but even still I, i'm against it i'm against it more the principle not necessarily not, not not necessarily on how it was made if if that if i'm that's making sense um, another thing I, uh, another thing I want to point out is uh, uh, also in that regard, a lot of sub allegiance abilities, I feel that, uh, because they're, because they're so unique from each other and they have so many abilities that are different and not available to others. This, this book is going to take a, a lot, would probably take a lot longer to truly master. Like, obviously you could probably find a, uh, uh, one army construction that you really like, but if you want to go into other ones, let's say like if you're a Legion of Night player, but you want to move over to like Avangori or Virkos, there's definitely going to be an, a learning curve, which I, I, which in my opinion, I don't know if they, I don't don't know if i would really call this, this book the most beginner friendly in that regard which and not necessarily this is even makes the book i'm not even saying this is necessarily as uh makes the book bad i'm just saying that go know what you're dealing with when you're going into it that's one thing i will say also another thing still no ranged proper support uh like what what is it with with death tomes and not having proper ranged like what what like what is it are they is it something about being undead that makes you a, like you know like uh like allergic to ranged combat is it like is this like some kind of like you know uh, like unspoken agreement with the living that you'll you'll only ever fight them up close or we're only gonna have ranged with a very specific expensive units like is it like is is it, do we suddenly forget how to aim is it because we don't have eyes on our on our skeletons. Is that, is that why they can't aim? Because they got no eyes? Like, I don't know. I, I, I just, like, once again, if there was one thing, now, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not in any way nostalgic for Old World. I never really was into, I never, I was never really into Warhammer Fantasy, but if there's one thing they, one thing I do, they did have going, is the undead back then did understand range. Like, Tomb Kings had, had range. They had archers. Give it back to them. Okay, rant over. Um, also, an, a, one thing I'm noticing is I, I feel like some you because there's so many units in this book, a lot of them are still being outcompeted. Like as been brought up by a lot of people, like this book can definitely do monster mash. But like for example, like the the zombie dragon and uh, the 
uh, the terror geist, even though they, I would say they did get better. I, I still don't think they're, I still think they're over costed for what they do. And they're not even the only ones. There's are tons of units in this book that I feel are just clearly going to get out competed and you're never going to see them, you know, like the, but like as a lot of people have pointed out, a lot of the Palakine units, uh, you know, those guy, you know, those basically those dioramas where the vampires or the necromancer are like riding on like floating thrones. A, a lot of people are pointing out a lot of those still aren't that good, even though they, even though they did improve. And uh, also, like I said, a, a lot of, there's a lot more, like a lot of units are just clearly more efficient than others. Like, for example, like, you know, uh, like a lot of people are pointing out how um, even though like the grave guard may, may not be as efficient as they once before, like a lot of people are saying just bring more skeleton warriors. And, um, you know, like, I, like, I'm not saying you can't bring these units, but I just feel like it, while there's better internal balance in this book, they still haven't fixed all, fixed all the imbalances. Like, you know, I, I'm pretty sure there's a, there's going to be a meta forming very quickly, uh, in regards to this book. And, um, I also feel like a lot of the army rebalances are a little uneven. Like some units I feel got nerfed a lot more than others. Like, for example, like, um, uh, like the blood knights, I feel in some ways. Uh, I feel got nerfed harder than maybe some other units that that really shouldn't have been. Like uh, I'm trying to think off the top of my head which that one is. Um, the Vargolfs. That's it. Like there. Like one thing. Like here's the thing. The Vargolfs. I'm not even saying what I mean by them is I don't even think they got um, uh, nerfed. I just feel they haven't. They didn't change at all. So what I feel is so many other units in the book got better while they didn't change which I feel wasn't a good thing because I feel that means they, like, they weren't necessarily being played t a ton in the old book. Now I feel they're just going to get, they're just going to get regularly regu regulated to the back of the, of the bunch even more. So I kind of feel, I kind of feel like, uh, again, I think they were just pushing, they were trying to push the newer models over the, the some, some of the older kits, but you know, that's neither here nor there. So, what are the army combos in this new book? Well, as always, there's always the, the age-old tradition of drown them in bodies. Yeah. No, the, the, like, in, in, even though they, there's been some changes to the book, like, the, probably a lot of the play styles are still virtually the same. Horde is, like, Horde is still very much good in this book. There's a lot of cheap chap with, uh, with, with, that are still hit pretty hard. Like, zombies definitely got nerfed in this book. There's no real, I know some people are saying, oh, well, you know, the drag down, I think, is, a, could, could work better in this circumstance. Guys, they, they lost their attack, ner they, they lost their, uh, their mortal wounds on attack unless you unless you you you, you, you combine them with another unit like i i feel they definitely got nerfed and honestly they needed to be nerfed they were too good i felt they were definitely too good in the last book but uh they but they're still definitely viable and again they make perfect they they, they function perfectly well with grave guard and skeleton warriors and blood knights and black knights and all the other and you know dire wolves and all those other griblies you can you can just hurl them at the enemy and just watch them tear stuff down they go and again you can bring stuff back easier so less word also mage supremacy is still a thing like they they, they uh overall this book still has some of the i think some of the most points efficient mages in the game right now they got a lot of there's a lot of new spells to play with so don't feel afraid to go in that regard um also they can monster mash i guess uh like i said i don't feel that you know like the, the like you know you've got vengorian lords you've got your zombie dragons you got your vampire lord on zombie dragons they have some pretty good monsters but do i think they that it um i don't now while i don't think that's the most points efficient strategy like for example like you know when you're comparing those to like other armies like for example like you know sons of bayamat uh, you know, like, uh, Sons of Bayamad and, uh, uh, what are the other ones? Uh, oh, uh, yeah, Frost Lord Spam, and heck, even the Flesh Eater Courts, uh, even though they're using the same unit, a bit more or less, they, they have more ways to, to, they have more ways to, you know, get the, get the points efficient attacks out of them. Like, you can definitely, don't get me wrong, you can definitely make, uh, effective lists with them, but I feel that other armies just kind of do it better, but, you know, don't let me stop you. Uh, also, lots of fast heavy hitters, like I said, you got tons of calv lots of fast units like you got like a cavalry an all cavalry army especially in let's say like a legion of blood or a or a castellai dynasty is still perfectly viable and i would say actually pretty strong um but overall but even though i say all this i still feel the book is still 
largely a horde army like honestly i feel like that's where the buffs work best on that's where the army the army abilities really kind of lean into i kind of i do feel that in the long run the the meta with them is going to lean more towards that i just feel that that's how it's going to work so overall what do i think well i would probably say yeah the book is a lot better than it was before like for example i felt that legion like if i'm looking back in the history of the of the soul blight even like back when they were just legion of nagash i felt the book just didn't have enough uh, identity especially with the sub factions that uh i feel like again uh when they were like that i felt they were too like it was probably the same situation they were with the cities of sigmar they they that they, they existed in a book that would basically was meant to act as a placeholder for all the older models till they started breaking until they started you know defining the factions more so th with the soul blight grave lords the second edition book i felt uh they were definitely had a much more of an identity like they're much more separate from let's say all the other death factions uh they definitely had a lot going for them but I, I feel overall the book had some shortcomings which i think we saw in the later half of the second edition where they i felt they were kind of lagging behind this book i feel definitely was made with more third edition in mind there was a lot more there was a lot more care done to like fix some of the power gamer moves with the last book there was a lot more effort to make them more uh make their abilities more accurate to the fluff more accurate to what the, the different sub races if you want to call them of the undead are uh and i feel like they also gave the the sub allegiances more character so overall while this book is far is i, I don't think this book is perfect like uh but I still think it is pretty good. In fact, I would actually put them up there arguably with some of the more durable armies in the game now with just how their their regeneration works, how their resurrection works, how their debuffing of the enemy works. Uh, yeah, in fact, I would actually I would actually honestly say that I feel that uh, their hitting power was maybe reduced somewhat, but their but their overall durability has increased. And it's also and also their hitting power has changed up how it works um like perfect example like a perfect example is be like, like look at that look at the necromancer with the dance macabre instead of making them attack twice you're making them attack once in the hero phase like it's you might say it's the same not necessarily it's actually quite different especially for those who understand how the difference between hero phase attacking and just attacking twice in the combat phase works so um I, like that's what i mean their their attack profiles have been changed up and you have to change up how you look at the abilities themselves but in that way i still think it, it's the book is is has definitely improved and uh, i'm curious to see how the meta works around them well anyway uh i hope you enjoyed this and uh i hope you have a nice day uh enjoy the new book and uh long live nagash <laughs> i'm just kidding not really <laughs>